Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar and welcome to this new module on Pega Upgrade. If you are a lead system architect, lead developer or if you are a Pega administrator, definitely in your project you will be dealing with the Pega Upgrade phase. If you get some experience with Pega Upgrade, do not miss it, it adds to your resume. And in this set of lectures, I am going to share my experience with Pega Upgrade. I led Pega Upgrade couple of times and here I am going to share you from top to bottom, from planning to execution. Okay, first in this introduction video, I am just going to talk about a high level plan, how you can start with the Pega Upgrade. The first is like, of course, there will be a stage where you will plan with the teams because when you plan for an upgrade of a Pega application, you may be dealing with a lot of teams. So planning plays a very critical criteria where you have to sit together with the team and decide. Okay, the first thing which you can decide is about the Pega version and Pega will always recommend you to upgrade to the latest and greatest version. At this moment, we have 24.1 released. So if you are upgrading, definitely you can take a look at the latest version. But my recommendation is like, let's say if a latest version is introduced in this month, it is a bit risk that you upgrade to the latest version. Instead, you can just go one version down. You can always think on this perspective like N-1. Let's say if the latest version is 24.1, I can always go to 23.1 and then when you plan for a next upgrade and year after, then you can go N-1. So you can keep doing this on your upgrade planning. Again, this is not about one size fits all. So definitely you have to talk with your team and decide, but at least go to the latest version or latest minus one version. You can also easily convince business by looking into those versions and then explaining about what business can get out of it. For example, 23.1, you get all those Gen AI feature. And 24.1, again, lot of improvements were done both on the AI as well as on the constellation. So there are some values use cases which you can showcase to business and decide on the pega version and the next is about the timeline as i already mentioned you may be dealing with different teams during this upgrade phase right so you have to come together let's say if you have one database where like 10 applications and five different teams are working on those applications then you have to come together then you have to plan a particular timeline where you can decide on your upgrade phase because upgrade is not just about one night you upgrade and the next night you just go live it's not like that you have to plan some sprints dedicatedly to do some preparation before you get inside the upgrade phase so definitely you need to decide on a timeline together with all the team so once that is done then teams will of course they will ask you a question like what will be the exact time window like for example Will it be a one sprint effort? Will it be a two sprint effort? So you have to high level do some t-shirt shaping saying that it's going to be small, medium, large, something you can use on your own. But on a high level, you can say it's going to take three sprints, four sprints. Again, if you enter the preparation phase there also, you will get to know more. Okay, let me enter to the preparation phase. Why I meant that is you will also start doing the app review. You will use some upgrade tools. When you use these two, you can easily identify how long it's going to take. Let's say your application is kind of a very old application in the sense it was first built using Pega 6, then you had Pega 7 and now you are into Pega 8. And if you do some app review, there are some chances that you can have some kind of technical depths. So that can cause some issues usually during the upgrade, especially on some UI rules. So when you do some app review, you can check on the guardrails, how the UI guardrails are there, how much customization was done. So that plays a very critical role during your upgrade journey. It can impact your upgrade duration. And the next is about the upgrade tools. Pega provides officially, they provide some upgrade tool. It is mandatory that make use of it because with my experience, we made use of that and we got the benefit out of it. So do not miss that upgrade checker tool, which I will explain in a dedicated lecture, how you can use that upgrade checker tool. The outcome of the upgrade checker tool definitely can impact your duration. Let's say you now finalize like you are going to use three sprints to complete your upgrade from the dev to the production. So you have some kind of timeline now, then you can also plan for your skimming. Why skimming? Why do we need to do during the upgrade? So skimming what it does is, so if you have some heavy rule base, skimming can always benefit you. So whenever you go for some major release, major upgrade, if you do a skimming, so you can have some lightweight rule base in your application context. I'll also briefly touch about this skimming in a separate lecture. And then you will also create some test cases as a preparation because before you enter into upgrade, you don't want to create all your test cases during the upgrade. So upgrade time, 
full focus only on testing so already you should have some test plans defined test cases defined and you can also start with runbook runbook i would say definitely runbook needs to be updated during the upgrade phase because you may have some product zips that needs to be imported you may have some hot fixes that needs to be imported but as a preparation you can do like a high level template runbook already defined or this runbook can also be moved during the execution phase okay now let's assume you did all your preparation work team is completely ready they fixed all the upgrade checker findings and they are now ready now we enter into the execution phase like the first environment which gets upgraded right so let's say you upgraded your dev environment but pega also do recommend that you can upgrade your stage environment you can clone a stage environment upgrade it and then you can also go production instead of dev that is a different pattern pega recommends when you are into pega cloud but let's take a very simple scenario like you are upgrading your lower environment let's call it as dev so how this upgrade work it's just a shell script or a bat script for which you have to provide some kind of input parameters that is it and that shell script the script can take care of everything just like how we had for the prpc service utils right exactly same thing we are going to get that uses the ant invocation and upgrade script normally works with the pega platform but then you can also have some kind of frameworks right so you can import or manually you can also take the zip and then import it in your application if you are using some framework you also need to upgrade your framework you cannot just avoid that if you are using customer service or pega marketing framework you should always take a look that if they have a higher version that is compatible with your pega version if yes you have to upgrade it okay let's say you completed your execution phase your upgrade scripts everything went fine then the next task is you have to look on the post upgrade task the first thing is like as a lead developer you can just do a small smoke test do some intake and make sure there are no exceptions just on a high level do some intake the intake can be also like for example let's say with the new release you got some new agents new job schedulers and maybe those job schedulers are not needed for you so in that case what you can do is you can just stop the job scheduler this can be a one intake task so by this way you can do some intake task as a lead developer and then you can also run some static assembler that can help with building the cache because when you do some upgrade definitely you are getting new version new rules are getting introduced so these new rules for the first time it's going to take a lot to get assembled so you can always use the static assemble to already assemble the rules and we already talked about this static assembler in a previous lecture it's fine and finally we can also install the hot fixes because normally with any version any higher version you may have some hot fixes because some customers might have upgraded they might have faced some issues then pega might have introduced some hot fixes for that version so it's always good that you check with them and then get the hotfix ids which needs to be installed i have a dedicated lecture i will show you how you can scan your system for the hotfixes to identify the critical hotfixes and then give it to the pega i will also show you that in a separate lecture and this is all about post upgrade task which you need to do it on the same day or the nearby hours once that is done then you enter into the testing and validation phase where your team members where your testers can contribute they can validate the application they can execute their test script in the application and i'm sure you will have few bugs for sure so you have to fix the bugs and then create some zip like if it is a valid bug you fix it in your application if it is a product bug you can create some sr get some input from sr like if they ask you to change something or install some hot fixes they can always provide some solutions for you you can use that as well and at the end you may have some zips ready for you that can be deployed now let's say we completed one environment and this cycle is going to execute so you are going to the execution phase again for the next environment intake again you are going to do and then you are going to test it so this can repeat for all the lower environment and also for production so you will have some production live time where mostly i think you will be following during the non peak hours or some non business hours you can plan the upgrade and if you are not very sure about the downtime you can also have some kind of mirror environment where you can do some dry run for your upgrade so once you got very good confidence very good picture how this is going to be then you can start with your production upgrade same execution same intake you will not do entire validation for sure you will do some smoke test and once that is done you enter into the aftercare so aftercare is very very critical you should keep monitoring your upgraded environment check for some kind of logs some kind of alerts 
that are not generated before upgrade and that are getting generated only during the upgrade if there are some kind of exceptions definitely you need to take a look actively monitor it and make sure your applications are healthy so this is a very high level planning how you can plan your upgrade in the next coming lectures i'm going to little bit detail pick some of the items and then explain you how things are done in a real time see you in the next lecture